Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on a pistol that I have regrets over. Not regrets selling or owning, but regrets not buying. This is the SIG P227, and this particular example is on loan to the channel from my good friend Jack. You guys know he has lent so many awesome firearms to this channel, so I can create as much content as I possibly can. This is Sig Sauer's currently discontinued double stack 45 pistol in the P220 series. And what I mean by the P220 series is pretty much any gun that is an evolution of the P220. But before we talk about what this gun is and show you some other examples and how we got here and kind of why I wish I owned one of these and should have picked one up when they were in production, let's talk about my primary sponsor, Brownworks. You guys know I talk about him in every range report video because he supplies my ammunition for all of these range reports. And let's say you're clicking on this video right now because you own a SIG P227 or looking at a SIG P227 or maybe you own another SIG pistol and you're like, wow, I really would love to have some awesome custom grips, maybe with my name or some type of custom logo on them or a specialty color or even made out of some special exotic wood because it is a family heirloom gun. Well, Brownworks is the place to go. Mark, who owns Brownworks, is a master craftsman. He custom makes every set of grips for every single customer. They are all handmade. As I mentioned before, he can put on any type of custom finish custom logo. He always puts extreme detail into every set of grips that he makes and he wants to make sure that you are happy with them. If you own a 1911, a Beretta 92, a Sig P220, even a CZ pistol, go check out Brownworks. Any gun that can accept wooden grips or custom grips, he can make them for you. Go check out what he has to offer. If he doesn't have them, contact him and I guarantee you he will work hard to to make sure he can provide any type of grip that you need and please tell him the Texas Gun Vault sent you. I'm going to put a link in the description and the comments section below with a discount code and an affiliate link if you want to go over there and check out all he has to offer. So once again, please go check out Brownworks and thank him for supporting the Texas Gun Vault. So now let's talk about the SIG P227. Essentially, as I mentioned, this is the double stack version of a 45 caliber P220. All of the guns that bear some type of numbering in P220, P225, 26, 27, 28, and 29 all pay homage to the original SIG P220, which I have right here. Now, when this gun came out in the 70s, it replaced the P210 in the Swiss Army. And theirs were all chambered in 9mm. They were a single stack 9mm handgun. Well, they wanted to import them to the United States. And back in the 70s and early 80s, 45 was the predominant semi-auto caliber. After all, everyone loves a 1911, right? So they chambered these for 45. This particular example I have is an early 90s version, chambered in 45, and it is single stack. And so as time has gone on and the evolution of pistols has taken hold, people complained about such a large gun only being chambered in a single stack magazine. So in the 1980s, when the military was looking to replace the 1911 with the trials that eventually gave us the Beretta M9, SIG introduced the SIG P226. Looks just like the 220, but this is a double stack version of the 220 chambered in 9mm. This particular example is my own. This is a Mark 25. 226. It is a fantastic pistol and considered to be one of the best 9mm pistols on the market. They also made a compact version of the single stack 9mm. In Germany they called it the P6, but here in the United States we call it the P225. Now this is the 225A1. This is their current version of it. The magazines are not reverse compatible supposedly, but I have never tried it out on a P6. This is a fantastic carry pistol. It looks just like a 220, but a lot smaller. 
Then they made a compact version of the P226, so a compact gun, but with a double stack magazine. This is my M11A1, which essentially is the US military version of the P228. Now, something that was lacking in the SIG lineup for a long time was a double stack 45. Now, you guys know 45 is just one of those venerable calibers that has just been around in American gun culture for a long time. In fact, it came out in 1905. Everyone thinks the 45 is the caliber of the 1911. Well, really, it was first introduced by Colt in the M1905, which was also a John Browning design. So for some reason, it took them a long time to go, hey, we need to stuff more capacity in a 220, and that's what the 227 is. So as you can tell, it looks just like a 220. So some people will say these P220 edition guns are essentially, if you change the last number, you have a different size, maybe different caliber, double stack, single stack. They all look the same. They kind of suffer from the same problem Glocks have. They all look the same, and I totally get that. So you just get different magazine capacities and caliber. Another thing that this gun, I think, tried to compete for was the Joint Service Pistol Program. Now, this was a gun that was supposed to replace the M9 and be chambered in 45. and a lot of companies had entrance to this program, including HK, which offered, I believe it was the HK-45 and the USP chambered in 45. And FN offered the FNP, which is now called the FNX, and this is the FNX 45 Tactical. And I'm going to compare this to the 227 for one big reason. The 227, while it does have a double stack magazine, and it's a pretty beefy handgun, the magazine only carries 10 rounds. Now that's pretty good for 45, right? But its competitors, the HK, the USP, carries 12 and the FN, FNX or FNP carries a lot of ammunition in this 15 round magazine. Yeah, 15 rounds of 45 fit in this magazine. So when you compare that to the 227 with only 10 rounds and it's a gun that is about the same size, well, it does kind of lack in that department. But it is a high capacity 45 semi-automatic pistol. Now, why did I say I wanted this gun when they were in production? Well, I just didn't have one. I pretty much have everything else in this series, and it's the one gun I didn't have. It was kind of brought in kind of late, as I mentioned. In fact, they did a few upgrades to these guns. They even offered them in what was called the E2 grip. So if you notice, this grip here, and hopefully I can get this on camera, does not have any grip screws. It's a very comfortable and ergonomic grip as compared to some of the other pistols in the lineup. So here's my 220. As you can see, it does have the grip screws right there. It requires a special tool, but these feel really good in your hands. I believe they still offer these as an upgrade to the 220 and the 227 if you have the standard grips, but the standard grips will also fit these. Okay, so I know I'm going a little bit long here, and this is just a little bit of history of what this gun is, because not many people know or have ever heard of the 227. So let's talk about the things I like and don't like. Well, I've already touched based on most of them, things like the grips, I like the capacity, but I especially like the sights. Now this is the base model. They did have versions like the Tactical, which I believe had a threaded barrel, but the thing that was on all of these guns was the Sig Knight sights. I love these tritium night sights. I don't know if I can get that into focus, maybe I can. I have always liked the factory Sig sights. I think they just work perfect. And they're a nice upgrade. You know, when you buy a Glock, you get those plastic sights, and yeah, you can take those off really easily and replace it with anything. SIG always gives you a nice set of metal tritium night sights. Nobody really complains about them, and these work great on the 227. So now let's talk about a couple things that I don't like. First off, being a SIG, it has a very high bore axis. I love this design. It is robust. It is battle-proven. But man, is the bore axis really high. I know a lot of modern guns really work hard to try to get that bore axis low, so a lot of the recoil impulse comes directly back into your hand. With this gun, you're gonna get some flip, and that just goes for any gun in this lineup. When you look at it from behind, 
the back of the gun here, you actually see, once again, let's see if I can get that in focus. I know it wants to focus on my head, but there it is. You can see that there is a lot of slide above the grip, and that's just because it has that high bore axis. And I've already mentioned it only has 10 rounds as compared to some of its competitors. And last but not least, being the base model, this has the stock trigger in it. SIG offers something called the SRT trigger, which is called the short reset trigger. Many of the guns on this table have that. And I'm going to tell you, it is a great upgrade. These original triggers have a very long and slow reset. And so when I dry fire this here in the garage, this trigger feels kind of mushy. And when I have the reset, it feels like it takes that trigger a long way to go. And it's kind of slow. I kind of feel like the trigger return spring needs to be a little bit more sprung. But I don't know how this thing's going to shoot yet. Well, actually I do, but you don't. But I'm going to get this thing to the range. So this is going to be this gun's first shot. It's my first time ever shooting a P227. So the target's going to be set at seven yards, full magazine. Let's see how this thing shoots. All right, so I'm really happy with those first shots. It's not my greatest group, but the gun shoots well. It is such a comfortable gun to shoot. I think it's just because these E2 grips, it just fits my hand so well. And as I suspected, the trigger return spring seems to be a little bit weak and that reset is a little bit long. But for casual shooting at the range, so far, it's a nice shooter. Well, I'm gonna double the distance of the target. I'm gonna do what I call the accuracy portion. It's not really me trying to be some type of trick shot, but I wanna double the distance on this target. I'm gonna go for the head on this IDPA target and see how I do. I have a feeling this gun's gonna shoot pretty darn good. All right, so this is one of the few times I shoot it better at longer distances than I do closer in. I'm also getting used to it. Besides the gun wanting to flip a little bit, when you're shooting it slow, you don't really notice it. But the gun does have what I call the SIG Cadillac recoil. And that is because these frames have a full length rail. The entire length of the frame is a rail. And this slide, for the most part, it feels like it runs on ball bearings. It is a very smooth action. You know, when it comes to many other guns like Glocks, you typically have four points of contact. Well, with the SIGs, it's the entire length of the frame. And I really think that helps with the recoil, considering it does have a very high bore axis. But the gun just recoils different. Man, I like this a lot. It feels great, and as I said, I'm kind of feeling bad that I didn't pick up one when they were being made. They can still be found new, but because they've been discontinued, the prices have only gone sky high. I believe Jack told me that he paid under $550 for this thing, and that's relatively new. I went on GunBroker, and right now, just the base ones are going for $1,300, and the special tactical ones are going for over $1,500. I think these things were new about the $750 to $800 range, so... 
I know Jack doubled or even maybe tripled his money and these things are very desirable. You just can't find them. A lot of people want them and SIG discontinued them. So I may never get to own one. But now I want to give my wife Becky a shot. She loves to shoot every gun that comes through the Texas Gun Vault. I'm not really sure what she's going to think of this grip. It is a pretty beefy frame. And with these E2 grips, while they are comfortable, they are pretty wide. She has small hands, so I'm curious what she's going to think of this. Well, let's see what she has to say. So she actually gave it some pretty high marks. She said it was pretty comfortable to shoot. She said she definitely would not carry it as any type of concealed weapon, but for a range gun, it was pretty nice and she thought it was pretty accurate. So it kind of surprised me. She did say the grip is kind of large and I kind of wonder if I had a 227, if I went back to the standard grips, maybe she would like that a little bit more. So the next part of this test is I'm going to shoot an entire magazine in double action. As you guys know, all of these guns from SIG are double single action. So your first shot, if you pull it out of a holster, is supposed to be double action. And then every sequential shot will be single action. Some people like that, some people don't. But it's kind of the built-in safety because these don't have a manual safety. So that first trigger pull in double action is like having a revolver. Now, the double action pull on this, I actually think, feels pretty good when I dry fire it. Now, everyone knows when you shoot double action, typically you're not going to be as accurate as single action because that pull is so much heavier. So I'm going to shoot an entire magazine through this. I am going to lower the hammer using the decocker, which is on the side of the pistol. It's on every SIG pistol. So I will just decock it after every shot. You guys will see that. And I'm curious to see how my group is. Target will be set at seven yards. So I have to say, while I'm a little bit critical of this gun's single action trigger, its double action trigger is pretty good. I felt for a double action pull on every shot, my group was pretty darn good. So it has some pros and cons to it. I really would like to have a version of this with the SRT trigger in it, however. And that would just make the double and the single action pull awesome. But the double action pull on this is pretty commendable. I'm really happy with how it performed. Well, I am going to try to use this in what I refer to as the defensive use. Essentially, if you use this as a home defense gun, you have a couple of intruders, you have to unload the magazine really fast, change magazine out and get the gun back in action. How's it going to work? So I'm going to reset up this silhouette target. I'm just going to see how quick I can change the magazine and how the gun performs. Okay. 
So two things happened in that test that I was kind of expecting them. Number one, I wasn't able to get a good rhythm with this trigger just because that reset is kind of weird, it's kind of slow and kind of long. And then I think you also saw this gun wants to flip. When you're shooting this gun fast, because of its caliber and its high bore axis, it just doesn't have the same type of recoil that let's just say a Glock 17 would. Not that that's bad, you just have to anticipate it. SIGs are fantastic firearms, but because of that bore axis, it just has a little bit more muzzle flip and it was a little bit harder for me to get it back on target. So if I was going to use this as some type of defensive situation, I might want to go with a different gun or a different caliber, but with training, you definitely could use this. I mean, this gun has been reliable the entire range trip and man does it shoot the brass far it has a very strong ejection i am really happy with the performance of this gun so what are my final thoughts on the p227 by sig well, I have to say, this was a gun that I know a lot of people wanted them to make for a long time. I don't know why they were not as hot of sellers back then, but they are now. So if you can find one of these, if you see one of these at a gun show, if you see one of these at a gun shop, definitely take a look. If 45 is your caliber and you like big old handguns, because that's what this is. It is a big handgun and a big powerful caliber and a lot of people are gonna like that. So if you like to carry 1911s, but are looking to get in something that's maybe double action, single action, this is the way to go. It is built like a SIG. It is reliable, it is robust, it has a very nice finish to it, and it has the classic SIG look. There also is a very large aftermarket. Many of the 220 parts and accessories are going to fit on this gun, but the magazines, however, might be a little bit more difficult because this was not a huge run of guns that were made in this size that the double stack magazines are gonna be a little bit more expensive and not as plentiful as, say, the P220s. But overall, fantastic guns. It shoots just like all of the other SIGs that I have, and I'm really happy with them. I do think, though, the P226 is a little bit better of a gun, just because I kind of feel like 9mm is a better caliber in this platform. The only reason SIG ever chambered any of these guns in 45 was for the American market. And this gun was built around the 9mm. Now, it handles the 45 like a champ, but like in the original 220, I would love to have one in 9mm. They just recoil so much better, and I think they perform so much better. So, if you don't care about caliber, I definitely would go with the P226. But the quality is here. This essentially is a P226, a little bit bigger, chambered in 45. So, pretty much, it's going to be one of those caliber wars. What caliber do you want? From a performance standpoint, this gun works flawlessly. It is exceptionally accurate. You can upgrade it. I would just want that SRT trigger in it. So on my star rating, how would I rate the P227 by Sig Sauer? Well, I'm going to give this a solid four out of five stars. It's a gun that I still want. Who knows, maybe one day I'll come across a new one and I'll pick it up. But I'm so glad that I got to shoot this one. So thank you, Jack, for letting me borrow this. It's been kind of a gun that now you've made me regret not buying. But I'm glad that you were able to pick up one for such an incredible price. So four out of five stars, SIG P227, double stack 45. So what do you guys think? Do you own a P227? Do you like 45 caliber semi-automatic handguns that are double action, single action? If so, this might be the gun for you, if you can find one. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching.